Hi, my name's Connor Kendrick and you can contact me on any of the details on the screen at the moment. If you scan the QR code, it will also take you to my current GitHub repository. First, a bit about me. I started as an undergrad in computers games technology. I then helped an existing PhD student develop a software application to record the Kinect data. I then moved on to do a PhD myself, where I did facial landmarking using the Kinect in both 2D, as seen on the screen, and 3D, using the Kinect depth data. I then moved into a research associate position, where I helped other departments develop research-based software, and this image is an example of a 3D printed model from what programs I made. Some of the projects I worked as an RA was the Fast AI project, where we tried to classify if a skin lesion was benign, meaning non-cancerous, or cancerous. The second project was the Mammalbot project in collaboration with Imperial College London, where we took a scan of a breast lobule, 3D reconstructed it, and allowed a virtual camera to fly through the reconstruction to detect any anomalies. The final and most relevant project to this fellowship was with the University of Manchester, where working alongside paleontologists and museum experts designed a programme to help with the issue of mass digitisation of museum specimens. The result of this project was a programme called Mitisegmenter that allowed a user to take a CT scan of a plate of objects, separate all the objects while keeping the unique identification labels and export into universal file formats, both image and 3D. This was because the Natural History Museum alone has over 80 million different objects that require 3D archiving. A lot of these specimens, such as the flies or the butterflies that you can see on the screen, are fixed to a solid plate and removing them from that plate for individual scanning would not increase the time and cost of the project. It also poses the risk of damaging these rare specimens. The issue current techniques have is once they scan them and generate 3D objects, they're in a proprietary format, which means you need unique software to open those files, and you need a 3D expert to go through and separate all these objects and re-label, such as, as you can see, each fly has its own individual label under it. The issues the Natural History Museum and other museums are facing while doing this digital archiving has been split into four main categories. The first is the data acquisition. As previously mentioned, they usually use some form of 3D scanners, which needs a proprietary image format and unique software to open. These formats also capture a lot of redundant data, which makes the data storage for these 3D models and raw scans astronomically large, such as all the raw information from the scanner is usually saved alongside with the key images, which isn't really needed anymore. The third part is the file formats. As the data is stored, they're stored in these price formats which are quite large, contain all this redundant data. Most people can't access this data anymore. And that means this data really isn't future proof. Once these machines are made redundant, once these companies go away, these files can no longer be accessed easily and we risk losing this data. The plan for my fellowship is to organise free workshops with the Natural History Museum, Tomography of Scientific Advancement and the Society for the Preservation of Natural History Collections. During these workshops, we will discuss the four problems mentioned prior and how the mid-segmented programme will overcome them, such as loading in the priority formats, processing the 3D models while maintaining the required labels. We will also demonstrate how this reduces the storage requirements and future proofs of data by saving a lost look format, preventing the data from decaying over time. In addition to using files that will work natively without additional software on most PCs, such as Windows 8 and above. 
We'll also mention Reed's articles that show by doing this could boost the economy by over £2 billion. The workshops are to boost the recognition and open up communication through the museum digitisation, creating a community towards this goal. Thus, we will gather all members from the museum, such as creators, technicians and the academics and the researchers, to set a code of practice and standards for digitisation, the software usage to ensure proper digitisation is performed and is fit to cause. Thank you very much for listening and feel free to contact me for any additional